So I found this article by Midwestern Doctor. If you haven't followed Midwestern Doctor, you should on Substack. Unbelievable, all this stuff. This uh, this person, I don't know if it's a guy or a girl, it says dermatology's disastrous war against the sun, the forgotten side of skin health and the necessity of sunlight by the Midwestern Doctor. Okay, you ready? Get get hold on to your because here it comes. There's going to be several. I'm going to actually I'm going to have to break this up into three different segments, which I will do on Monday. So I'm just going to do one segment today. Skin cancers are by far the most commonly diagnosed cancer in the United States. So to prevent them, the public is constantly told, avoid the sun. You've heard that. Avoid the sun, right? Yeah. However, while the relatively benign skin cancers are caused by sun exposure, benign skin cancers, which is what this is, is caused by uh, sun exposure. The ones responsible for most skin cancer deaths are due to the lack of sunlight. Why lack of vitamin D or something? This is unfortunate because sunlight is arguably the most important nutrient for the human body, as avoiding it doubles one's rate of dying and significantly increases their risk of cancer. The exact opposite. Ha, Misha, is this not blowing your mind? I always thought it was like how Caucasian you are versus how, uh, you know, I thought it was like a sliding scale. Well, I'm telling you right here, Kurt, the important thing we need to focus on here is that, take Kurt away, is that <laughs> avoiding it doubles one's rate of dying. Avoiding the sun doubles your rate of dying yeah. and significantly increases your risk of cancer. Yeah, I believe it because when I lived in New York, I, uh, you know, you live like a vampire. Yeah. And everybody has a deficiency. And now everybody's... Got, and yes, It's sir. a common urban problem. That's right. Of a severe vitamin D deficiency. Well, like in the 1800s, it was rickets. Yeah, right. And it's like right. boat diseases and shit. <laughs> so a strong case can be made that this dynamic was a result of the dermatology profession with the help of a top PR firm rebranding themselves to skin cancer fighters, something which allowed them to become one of the highest paying medical specialties in existence. This happened in the 80s. Yeah. They hired a, a, Wall, a Wall Street advertising firm. Unfortunately, despite the billions that is put into fighting it each year skin cancer, there has been no substantial change in the number of skin cancer deaths. None. No substantial change. So all this skin cancer awareness and all this skin and, and wear your uh, sunblock. By the way, sunblock, uh, a lot of the sunblock, toxic. Yeah, that's what They don't I'm... tell you that either. Not good. There's two different kinds of sunblock. There's the toxic, bad kind. So I'm going to try to go through this as fast as I can because there's a lot to cover. So because of how successful the war against sunlight has been, many people are unaware of its benefits. For example, sunlight is critical for mental health. This is the most well appreciated. This is most well appreciated with depression. Uh, for example, consider this study of Chinese operating room nurses, which found their mental health was significantly worse than the general population, and that this decline was correlated to their lack of sunlight exposure. Okay, so that's one. Number two, a large epidemiological study found women with higher solar UVB exposure had only half the incidence of breast cancer as those with lower solar exposure, and that men with higher residential solar exposure had only half the incidence of fatal prostate cancer. A 50% reduction in either of these cancers greatly exceeds what any of the approaches we use to treat or prevent them have accomplished. Sun, the sun, for fighting cancer. Three, a 20-year prospective study evaluated 29,518 women in southern Sweden. I was just there. Oh, the meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> where, I, not kidding. Where, where women from each age bracket with no significant health issues were randomly selected, essentially making it one of the best possible epidemiologic studies that could be done. It found that women who were sun-avoidant compared to those who had regular exposure to sunlight, were 60% more likely to die. So if you avoid the sun, 60% more likely to die, being roughly 50% more likely to die than the moderate exposure group, and 130% more likely to die than the group with high sun exposure. You've been avoiding the sun, haven't you, Misha? 
Oh, okay. I'll just call, we'll just call her Meester. <laughs> Rick Overton said machete. Uh, okay. <laughs> No, to be clear, there are very few interventions in medicine that do anything close to this, meaning the sun. The largest gain was seen in the risk of dying from heart disease, while the second gain was seen in the risk of all causes of death besides heart disease and cancer. And the third largest gain was seen in deaths from cancer. So it lowered your risk of death from all those things, including cancer. The investigators concluded that the smaller benefit in reduced cancer death was in part an artifact of the subjects actually living longer and hence succumbing to a type of cancer that would have only affected them later in life. So even though they so what they're saying is that because they got sun, they lived so much longer that a lot of them got cancer at the end, but they would have died much earlier had they not gotten sun exposure. Do you follow that? I hope yeah. so. The largest benefit. Get this, Kurt. The largest benefit was seen in smokers. Yeah. To the point, non-smokers who avoided the sun, non-smokers who didn't get sun, had the same risk of dying as smokers who got sunlight. Yeah, that makes sense. Because you got to figure out just your mental state. 100% getting sun, it changed your mental state. It changed your mental okay? state. Okay, and then, then it's easier to exercise, especially exercise out in the sun. And it's, it, it's a radically different feeling than... And I've done both things, and it's it, the vampire lifestyle. It, it Not makes good. Your brain bad. It's you, bad. Yeah. You, <laughs> so according to the American Academy of Dermatology, this is what this is what the the official dermatology academy says about skin cancer. You ready? It says skin cancer is the most common cancer in the United States. Current estimates are that one in five Americans will develop skin cancer. They just call it all skin cancer. Mm -hmm. So there's the kind of skin cancer that most people get. Not scary at all. And then there's one percent of people die from skin cancer. That's the scary part. They don't they but they lump them together. So they're doing it here. One in five Americans will develop skin cancer, which makes you shit your pants. I and thought, get and get afraid of the sun. Yeah. You know. uh, it is estimated that approximately nine thousand five hundred people in the US are diagnosed with skin cancer every day. But did you know that most of those skin cancers diagnosed are benign? That's what I, I did think that. Basal cell and squamous cell carcinomas, the two most common forms of skin cancer, are highly treatable if detected early and treated properly. They even put these two together, which is incorrect for them to do. Because exposure to UV light is the most preventable risk factor for all skin cancers. So they're, li they're lumping all skin cancers together. The kind of skin cancer that's caused by the sun which is not as scary as the kind of skin cancer that is caused by not enough sun. Yeah, I didn't know. Which there was is one. actually very scary. I didn't know there was one caused by not enough so sun. So they're doing That's that. The thing I didn't realize. The Academy of Dermatology encourages everyone to stay out of indoor tanning beds and protect their skin outdoors by seeking shade, wearing protective clothing, uh, including a long sleeve shirt, pants, a wide brim hem like machete, and sunglasses with UV protection. And applying a broad spectrum water resistant sunscreen with an SPF of 30 hard to kill us, uh, skin not covered by clothing. Likewise, according to the Skin Cancer Foundation, more than two people die of skin cancer in the U.S. every hour. That sounds pretty scary, right? Well, let's break that down to exactly what that means. It is generally believed that around 2.64 million people get one cancer a year. Skin cancer. The, the three primary risk factors for basal cell carcinoma cancer are excessive sun exposure, fair skin, which makes you more susceptible to excessive sunlight penetrating your skin, and family history of skin cancer. So that's the kind of cancer I got. I have light skin, blue eyes, and I get a lot of sun on my face. Because of this, the widely varying incidence of basal cell carcinoma is largely due to how much sunlight exposure people have. And typically you find it in areas with frequent sunlight exposure, like on the face, okay? The important thing to understand about basal cell carcinoma is that because it almost never, it almost never metastasizes, it's not very dangerous. And most sources say that it has a 0% fatality rate. 